Good morning and welcome to our Wednesday show. Jure de Calo on Inside News, myself and Shahil. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened last week and then obviously our two to follow. No barrier trials this week, so we have uh, we have put in one or two extra horses as far as the sand track, is, uh, the sand track work is concerned. Remember, it is Prince Margaret Cup week. Uh, Princess, sorry, Princess Margaret Cup week, and uh, it is a 1400, 1400, wait yes. for age, yeah. and uh, it looks like it's going to be quite an exciting race, so we have uh, got, put in a couple of horses that will be running in that particular race. Right, let's talk about uh, last week, uh, the last meeting, Barrack Street, uh, we did mention that, well, we, we thought that that big turnaround in the weights was going to be, obviously, be in his favour. I have to say that uh, Henry Tudor ran a cracker, he's obviously a much better horse with blinkers, but uh, Great ride by Diego de Cavea. Obviously, the weight uh, did was in his favour, but I thought it was a cracking rider when he changed his stick from his left hand to his right hand. For me, that made the difference uh, at the end uh, at the line there when uh, Barrick Street managed to get his head in front of Henry Tudor right on the line. Uh, a good a good ride from the youngster. Yeah, I do agree with you. You know, um, the horse was hanging in, and I felt that he was gonna. Um, th th what they do with the reins? Uh, he didn't do that, like you mentioned. He he changed the whips, and that that really made him win the race. I would imagine too. Good ride by Randall Simons to and Henry Tudor was a, a great duel as we expected. Um, um, track record equaled, so he's a top sprinter this Barrack Street. Yeah, he's a. I was actually having a look last night. I didn't realize that he's actually a half brother to JPEG. Yeah, uh, I read that too. Yeah, yeah it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, JPEG, I, I remember JPEG uh, quite well. I, I used to ride for Basil Marcus, and uh, I was lucky enough to ride JPEG once. And uh, he was an unbelievable horse. He went to over. He went to end up earning. I think it was over forty million rand overseas. Wow. And uh, he's a he's a good stallion, and uh, he's doing very very well. The JPEG, and I couldn't believe that Barrack Street is his half brother. But obviously, he can run. Um, I, I tell you something. At, at level weights, it's going to be hard for him to beat Henry Tudor again. Yeah. Uh, that's my opinion. I, I, I just I just think it's going. To, although he has had a bit of tough racing, you know, he hasn't been able to sort of uh, sit in behind a horse. He's always been one off. One off. Yeah, but the thing is also he's a horse that is full of ability. Like you mentioned, half brother to JPEG. Do you really think that they have to stick to the 990 with him, or he can go further? I don't know. I don't know. You know, the thing is, it's quite a big jump from a 990 to a 1400. 1400. It's, a, it's you know, if you ask me a 1200, I would say yes. But from a from a 990 to 14. a 1400, I think his ideal distance, yeah, in Mauritius, is the 990. the 990. Right. Let's. Uh, well, we were just talking about uh, Diego de Cavea, uh, Diego de Cavea. I thought that was a good ride from Barrack Street. Uh, he started off his first meeting with a winner, and then Randall Simons, a terrific ride on Till Dawn, yeah. and uh, and then also he managed to win on Starsky awesome. as well. So the two young jockeys. Uh, well, the two, when I say young, uh, the two newer jockeys that have arrived in Mauritius, they've done pretty well. In the, I see in the in the news there is one or two uh, youngsters also supposed to be coming through soon. Yeah, um, we've heard the names of Eric and Guane for the Amos Uriel stable. So let's see if the authorities give the green light to that. Yeah, and then I see, who was Tristan Godin? Who was he? Uh, I, I see he was also... I think. Okay. I think. Okay, all right. Okay, well, let's see how that goes. There's not many meetings left. Well, there's, there's two and a half months left of, of racing. Dale Holland, well, he had a mixed uh, fortunes on, on Saturday. He finally managed to, to, to get back into the winner's box with Rahib. Uh, a good ride, sent him off to the front. Unfortunately, he caused interference and he copped a two-week suspension and I think a 25,000 rupee fine as well. So mixed fortunes for, for Daryl Holland. Unfortunately, he, he's he been down with a little bit of gastro. I think he was supposed to have another inquiry yesterday yes, for the yeah. seventh race. So let's postponed. see. Yeah, so let's see how that goes. And then um, the pick eight, well, I was two legs out. Uh, I, I took a chance. I banked Power Tower and Bye Bye Rocket. And obviously, Barrack Street, I banked him as well. But Power Tower and Bye Bye Rocket, uh, disappointing runs from both of them. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, uh, at least uh, I think seven million plus minus seven million was one. There's a, there's a eight point eight almost nine million rupee carry forward to this week and um, let's see how uh, the pick eight goes but uh, at least some people want it okay. they all want something and uh, uh, well done to them. Right, let's talk about Clipper Captain, the my horse to follow. I thought that was a terrific run from uh, the son of, of Captain Al. He, he ran in the fourth race behind Rahib. Slow way, and uh, I see sort of uh, Diego de Cave was at him most of the way, uh, sort of bouncing in the saddle, just trying to get him into the race, and he eventually settled up in, I think it was second last, and uh, then he came into the straight, and he, he sort of battled to get a run uh, early on in the top of the straight, and eventually when that gap did open, Mark, he really 
absolutely took off. I, I go and have a look at the, the replay again. He really flew that last 100 meters. It'll be interesting to see what his finishing time was uh, in that particular race. And uh, going back to his South African form, he performed well over 1,200, suggesting that, yeah, he'll probably do well over, over 1,400. And uh, I really think that this was clever. Uh, Clipper Captain, I beg your pardon, uh, the son of Captain Al. He looks like he's going to be a nice horse. These Captain Al's do so they do really well here in Mauritius, and he's a typical looking uh, Captain Al. And they do sometimes uh, take a couple of runs to to find their feet, uh, especially the more immature ones. Uh, Clipper the Captain, uh, well, he's, well, he's had the two runs now. I think he looks like the, the penny has dropped. I, I'd like to see him when he comes out next time, especially maybe in a, in a 1400. I think he's going to run a cracker, a uh, clipper captain. So let's keep an eye on him. Right, Shahil, the horse that you looked at uh, was Simon Jones's horse, Halo. I thought that was a good run. Yeah, that's right. A real nice debut from him. He, he'd put up some decent work prior to that debut. I remember that was that one barrier trial. He jumped awkwardly and was slow to stride. He found himself at the back uh, early on and he was pretty wide in the back stretch and in that first turn. He probably didn't handle that first turn really well also. Um, listen, he, he was lost also when they turned in for home and he made up the ground when he found the gap and he absolutely flew home. This horse, I went back to check his South African form. It's a five-time winner. Thrice over 1,600 meters, twice over 1,400. And most of his races and his wins have been with the blinkers. Mm. So next time out, probably with the um, further distance and with the blinkers, I really think that Haler could be the first winner for Simon Jones if he doesn't win this week or in the coming weeks. But definitely Haler one to keep an eye on and one to follow. Yeah, yeah, he is a potential winner for the Simon Jones stable Halo. He ran on quite nicely. Looked a little bit big in the ring. Um, yeah. and, and obviously he would have needed that run. 990, no blinkers like you mentioned. Looked a little bit big and uh, it was an encouraging run. So let's keep an eye on Halo. Let's hope he pulls one off for Simon Jones or maybe even two before the end of the season, uh, uh, Halo. He, he really did impress me as well. Right, no barrier trials, so we're going to move straight onto the onto the sand work. We have pulled out, uh, or we have singled out uh, twelve runners or twelve horses for you. And uh, remember, like I said, it is uh, um, it is the Princess Margaret Cup uh, a level weight, and uh, we are expecting some. Well, we have seen the nominations. We've got Wall Tag, Rule the Night, Black Cat Back. Um, Barry uh, yeah, there's, it's, 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 it looks like quite a quite a quite a nice race, especially this time of the year. And uh, it's going to be a wait for age. And I do believe it's going to be quite an interesting race. The first horse I want to talk about is uh, Black Cat Back. He worked alongside Al Hamd. Probably going to start off favourite, I would yeah. imagine. Um, uh, let's see why. Well, he's most likely um, the favourite for the Princess Margaret Cup after some good runs. Remember, he ran second to rule the night. Now he meets him at five kilograms better off this time. Uh, now, because obviously it's a weight for age. So five kilograms is a lot for a, for a short head beating. Yeah. And uh, I do think that Bla Black Cat Back will obviously be a little bit better. Remember, he ran an excellent third to White River over 1,600 in the level weights. Was that the Bobby, Bobby Cup? Yeah. yeah. Uh, terrific run. So the Princess Margaret Cup, it is over 1,400. It is a level weight. Uh, I think the 1,400 is going to suit the source down to the ground. All his wins back in South Africa. I think it was a five-time winner. winner. All of them have been over 1,400. So he absolutely loves the 1,400. Should be hard to oppose on form and on his current condition. I thought he, well, I mean, obviously, Alham's not much of a horse that he can uh, talk about but still he looks good within he, in, in his, himself uh, there was a ter terrific workout his legs are really stretching out well he's obviously got no soundness problems and uh, black cat back I think he's going to take a power of beating the horse that you looked at um, Shahil was the horse that beat him last time which is rule the night and uh, even though obviously there's a five kilogram swing but yeah. but he's a decent horse on his day and he's working well yeah, he's a decent horse. He's the three-year-old champion, you know. He could have been unbeaten until now. Six starts, four win, two second place. Unlucky twice, I would say, because his saddle slipped against um, Viking Trail when Manuel Nunes had that little incident. 0 0.05 length behind wall tag, so could have been unbeaten, like I said. Nice gallop alongside Philosopher um, yesterday morning under Kirsty Ramsamy. Good time of 11.53 over the 400 <coughs> meters, which shows that he remains in top condition. It will be his first time in Group 1 company at Wade Forage, even though he'll carry only um, seven, uh, 57 and a half kgs compared to the others carrying 58. If he cracks a good draw and doesn't encounter any traffic problems in the running, I do believe that he's going to be one of the main dangers to Black Cat Back, who remains also my favorite for the race.
Okay, all right, yeah, Black Cat Pack, obviously with that weight turnaround. But Rule the Night uh, finished in front of Black Cat Pack last time. He's an improving sort, but five kilogram swing is a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a dance last week, Barrack Street. Yeah. It's playing a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the, I, I'm, a big, I'm a big believer in, in weights. I, I'm a, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm a big believer. That's why I can't see Rule the Night turning the tables on Black Cat Pack. But I agree with what you're saying. He's obviously going to be a contender for Saturday's uh, feature yeah. race. All right, I want to talk about. Uh, uh, are we gonna say, well, I'm going to stick with um, the, the Gojada stable, Perplexing. He worked alongside Ramanis and um, excellent win last time when he beat Al-Shiba. We saw what Al-Shiba did in the Maiden Cup. And um, look, I think Al-Shiba was a touch unlucky that day. I, I'm mm. not going to, let's, let's not um, fool ourselves. I think if Al-Shiba got stuck on the fence, yeah. he probably could have beaten Perplexing that day. But still, Perplexing is a, a terrific horse in his own right. Um, I th thought he was unlucky not to get into the Maiden Cup. I think he would have run a cracker there as well. Uh, he's got a good galloping weight, 58 and a half. 18.50 will suit him down to the ground, this horse. I've always, I've always wanted to see this horse go over a little bit further. And uh, in my opinion, he's going to be quite a tough horse to beat. Yes, there is Titsi Kama dance in the race. And uh, I know that you spotted him. You're going to talk about him a little bit later. But Perplexing, it looks like on paper this day, It'll yeah. probably be a two-horse race, perplexing and, and Titsi Commandance. But I think perplexing over the 1850. I think he's got the edge of it over Titsi Commandance. I like the way he worked. I like the way he, lo he, he, he was striding out there alongside Romanus, and uh, he's a top horse, perplexing. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls off his next win. Right, uh, the stable that's in form, mm. Vincent Allard. Uh, this, this little young horse that came out first time absolutely smashed them. It's him. Yeah, one like a good thing on debut. He still had more in the tank that day, I would imagine, despite being very green and keen. He's still very inexperienced. He's had only two starts back in South Africa. We spoke about that. I think one was against Padre Pio and the other one against Wave. Very unexposed because the form of, of these two horses, of these two races, have worked out pretty well. Um, listen, he has, he has a lot to grow this horse. He, his workout yesterday on his own and the Derek David was really promising. He's entered in the last race this week, you know, 0 26, 14, 50. He could be too good again. Yeah, that last race is quite a. Uh, it's, there's quite a couple of nice horses in that last race. I, I've, I'm going to mention a couple that I've seen train, but they're in the first and the last. So, so, and I see he's also in another race where he's got 53 and a half. But I, I doubt he'll. Uh, I think yeah. it's a 30 benchmark, 31. Yeah. I doubt he'll run there, but uh, you never know. Yeah. 53 and a half on his back, you, you, you never know. But uh, it's him. Yeah, he. That was a very uh, um, impressive win first time out, and he's obviously a lot better than what his merit rating suggests so let's keep an eye on it's him i think he's going to win a couple of races till he hits his ceiling yeah. and um, let's see how he goes right we were talking about that last race yes of course it's nominated in there it's a uh, manolette but he's in the first race as well but out of bracket 61 and a half so it'll be interesting to see if he which race he runs in uh two decent runs uh, in mauritius one in a 0 25 the one in a in a 0 26 once in a 14 one in a 990 i personally think that the 1400 is a little bit better suited to the 1400 than the 990 uh like i mentioned he is in a 1400 0 25 uh, yeah, and he's not guaranteed to run there, obviously, because, like I said, he is out of bracket. And then he is in the last race, the 1450-026. That's where you got uh, it's him. So uh, two runs under the belt now. He's obviously getting a little bit better. I personally don't think he's good enough to beat it's him. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, but but uh, let's see. Maybe he gets into that first race with 61 and a half. Uh, but, um, yeah, that was a nice workout alongside Sand Path. But uh, probably, I, I suppose, he, 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 I mean, we have to talk about these horses. But... Um, uh, it's going to be quite tough to beat. It's him. He's a good horse, this man. I remember his last start. I think he missed a break. That was Randall Simon's first ride. And he did finish off really nicely under the 990. So that's why I, I think you're saying that the 1400 could be yeah. better. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, his, his first run was good over 1400. It yeah. was a decent run. And um, this time, uh, 1400 or 1450. Yeah. One of the two is going to suit him. So, so we're not going to write him off completely against It's him. But uh, we'll, we'll see how, how he goes on, on Saturday. Right. The next horse you want to talk about is, is obviously Roman Dancer and from what I've seen, obviously, the, the, the Gojira stable, they look like they're in for a good day because I, I really like this was Roman Dancer. I've always liked him since he's uh, come here. Another horse that I just think is too good for his, his rating. Uh, he, like, it's him. He was bought as a two-year-old, so he came with quite a low rating. 
and uh, Roman Dancer, you spotted him training? Yeah, that's right. Um, in fact, last time his win was really good. He had to overcome barrier 9 over 990, which is never easy to justify favoritism. He won in a good way. Uh, he won by one and a quarter lengths. He's a beautiful son of Crusade. You were speaking about the, the beautiful son of Captain Alke, Clipper Captain. But this, this horse also, he's got that special look about him. Um, and he's pretty special too, because like you mentioned, they bought him as a two-year-old. But to win three races uh, at three-year-old on five starts in, in South Africa means you have a lot of ability. He worked very well on the LDP Placid last day morning. He can complete his double this Saturday because he's entered in race two, 990 again, benchmark 36. Yeah, I, I really do like Roman Dancer. I, I, I think, like I said, I think he's a lot better than what his merit rating is. Right, uh, I'm going to stick with that first race, last race uh, combination. Star of Zeus um, blew the start last time. He, he sort of fly jumped at the start and he, and he lost quite a couple of lengths. And at the end of the day, he only got beat four and a half lengths by Euroclodian, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Euroclodian. Uh, that was a benchmark 31. And uh, he now drops to a, well, he's dropped at one point. So now he's eligible in a 0 0.25. So he is eligible in the first. He's also eligible in the last race as well. Hopefully he behaves himself in the stalls. If he jumps on terms, I think that this was, could uh, be a big, big runner in that first race. And um, I like the way that he worked alongside Bear Hug. And uh, you'd think that in a 0 0.25, he's going to be a lot more competitive, especially if he, just, if he does jump on terms, uh, Star of Zeus. Let's hope that he behaves himself when they pull the button and he jumps on terms. I think he's a big runner in that first race. That's obviously if he runs in the first. In the last race, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, quite tough there with uh, It's Him. Right. One of the horses that you like to talk about a lot is Redline Captain. Yeah, such a gutsy animal. He's been trying his luck in stronger divisions these days. We've fourth behind um, Bad Attitude in the benchmark of 56. Before that, fourth behind Al Shiba in 61. It's amazing when you think that this horse has come such a long way. He started his first win was in a 0 0.25 last year, and he's now climbed up the rating. He's worked very well on the New Age Jagal yesterday. He wasn't really that impressive, but when he came back into the paddock, he was breathing really good, which suggests that he's in great condition at the moment. He's entered in race 4, 1500 meters, benchmark 51, which is much calmer waters than what he's been facing. He's down to 51, yes, but the 1500 might be a little bit too short for him. Let's see how he goes on Saturday. Okay, that's red done, Captain. Yeah, he has done one of those reset horses that have really done well. Right, sticking with reset, uh, one of your two to follow, Senior's Guest. Yes. Once again, another horse that's in that last race. Uh, but that was a cracking run to Cash Call. And uh, he could probably be the biggest danger if, if um, uh, it's him who runs in the last. This is probably going to be the biggest danger, seniors guess. He's improved a lot since that first run. Remember, Cash Call did come out and run second. second. And so that form has been pretty good, it's been pretty solid. I like the way that this horse has improved, uh, seniors guessed. And uh, he is in that last race, 0 26, 14, 50. I would imagine the extra 50 meters is going to suit this horse. And um, let's have a look how he goes. Uh, the, uh, like I said, that 1450 probably going to suit him a lot better than his debut of, of the 1400. He's improved a lot. He's looking well. He's working well. Uh, so we'll see how senior guest goes in that last race. But it really does look like an interesting last race. I mean, we're talking yeah. it as, as if it's the feature race. But, uh, well, there's just a couple of horses that I spotted that I thought had been working quite well. Right. Uh, another horse that you like to talk about, Shahil, is Avdik. That's right, 7th to Uzu last time out, but then on, it was only 0 0.80 length, and you, I sure remember so many horses finished on the same line that day. It was a good effort for him for the first time in a benchmark of 56. He's another one that is finding life a little bit tough now that as a result of being a 6-time winner. He's also started in 0 0.26, his first win last year. Had trick early on this season, which uh, made his rating brought up to 50. Good gallop yesterday morning with Teddy because, like you mentioned, Daryl Holland was sick and he wasn't he was absent from training. He's entered in race four, benchmark 51, the same race as a red line captain. I, I believe that the benchmark 51 is more suitable than the 56 of last time, so I'm sure FDIC will go in with a chance this week, but I'm not sure if Daryl Holland is riding. Like you mentioned, he's got that two week suspension, so let's see how FDIC goes. Yeah, I don't know if, what Daryl's going to do, if he's going to take it this week or. or Sort of you, can, you can differ it because it's a group break, group one meeting. Yeah, it is, and, and also interference as well. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, so interference, you can defer it to, to one week. All right, uh, and then Word Buster, he's one of my horses to follow. 
And uh, I said I'd follow him closely. I have been following him quite closely. There was a good run to Euro Clodian last time. The De Derek, David, Vincent, Alex, they just keep on rolling. I mean, it's yeah. unbelievable how, how well that stable's been doing. Um, it was his second start. He made, made even more improvement. And uh, remember, that was in a benchmark 31. He continues to make improvement all the time. There was a good workout next to uh, Dealer's Charm. And uh, I see this week he is entered in a 1650 benchmark 31. Remember, his last start was a benchmark 36. So he should be even more competitive this week. So let's keep an eye on Wordbuster. I like the way that the source is improving. In fact, I like the way that all Vince and Alice new horses oh. have taken one or two runs and, and, and they, they, they're running quite well now. All right, the, the, we're going to end off with Titsi Commandant. So we mentioned early on he will be probably taking on Perplexing. Yeah, he's a horse that we like. Um, he was one of my two to follow, and then when he ran, he was your value bit, and he he won nicely that day on the mile. Yes, the 54 and a half was a big plus for him, and Nourish picked up that pickup right, and he rode him very well that day. It was a decent performance. He's by Captain L, which suggests that he only gets better with racing, with each and every race. He's a two-time winner in South Africa, and he has run up to 2,000 meters, so that, that shouldn't have any problem with the 1850 that he's been tackling uh, this week in a benchmark of 61, but like you mentioned, he's biggest as um, his biggest opponent is going to be not the distance but perplexing yeah. if he can beat perplexing that's remained to be seen yeah he probably could I mean I'm not saying he can't but uh, it's going to be an interesting race uh, I, I think perplexing probably going to get the my sort of uh, nod yeah. um, but I, I've always liked the source Titsi Commandants and, and obviously a lot's going to depend on when that race card comes out. We'll have a look and then we'll we'll make up our minds as far as which where we're going to go. All right, well, that is our Wednesday show. We will be back Friday morning for On The Mark and uh, myself and Shahil will be going through the card as best we can on Friday. Thanks very much for joining us. See you on Friday. Goodbye.